you have um, exercise number two that's uh, being presented today, and we're going to go in the order in which the groups appear, so from one to thirteen. Um, <coughs> after we do exercise, everyone gets a chance to go. Uh, I will eventually put up the list of people that have completed on the website. So that's on, um, that will be here. So I will <coughs> update this list. And let's see. And then uh, after we finish this exercise, I will uh, send around a paper for signing up for exercise number three. And there is going to be one uh, change for exercise number three, and I haven't, I haven't put it up yet, but I'll modify the description. Um, instead of using uh, Christian Sund Diary Clinic, we're going to change that to a different uh, website. We'll change that to Kennel Star Mas Mastino because that's a uh, site in English and the uh, Christian Sun Dairy Clinic is not in English. So then <coughs> we'll have at least two sites that are in English, which is um, the Kennel site, which I'm going to replace as group number one, and then we'll also have Moot of Norway, which is in English. So it'll be a little bit easier to <coughs> divide yourself among the groups. <coughs> You're still going to have to interact with the other uh, groups because um, if you are group number four, you're designing an information architecture for group number one. So um, you might want to, uh, if, um, and then if you're group number one, you're designing an information architecture for group number two. So you're going to have to, uh, when, you, when you get uh, moods of Norway, you're not actually writing about moods of Norway, you're writing about this will be the clinic, the kennel site. So you have to make sure that you're uh, writing about the group that you want to write about. <laughs> so in, uh, in other words, if, if you want to write about the kennel, then you have to be a member of group number four. <laughs> but you're interviewing the other group to get feedback from them. So your reports are on your uh, reports and presentations are on the on your consultant work. <coughs> but when you if you are group number four, you're actually um, the customer. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, you work with your group. You can coordinate it. So you send email around and say, you work on this part, you work on this part. Yeah, but you have to work with your group. You have to work with the group before you. Yep. They have to write about you. And they have to you interview you. <coughs> they, they could interview you, or they can send you an email or some, some sort of way they need to contact you to get feedback from you as a customer. But uh, you are basically, you're doing group work. You have to manage group work. So you need to communicate somehow. You can use email, Facebook, whatever. Just divide up the the task, and um, and then the only and then somebody needs to present the group work at the end. You can all do it, or one person can do it from the group. So <coughs> there's one report and one presentation that's due. Um, I will. I could even do it now. I can send this around. Uh, this is a sign-up sheet, and it has group number one is uh, Kennel Star Mastino. Group number two is Every.no. Group number three is Seymour.no. Group number four is Moving <coughs> Norway. So if you sign up 
for Mood of Norway, your report is actually going to be about the kennel site. So you understand. Okay. And then uh, you should be no more than five people in a group. If we get around and there's 22 people here, I'm not sure how many people are actually here today, I will assign you or you, we can have a six person on a group. But uh, we only have four groups. Okay. So, um, <coughs> yeah. Let's we'll get started. And the other thing is now that we're going to go back and do uh, number today. Okay, so I'll, I can pass this around while people are doing presentations and we can start signing up for groups. <coughs> and um, if, if, if somebody doesn't want this video lecture recorded, then it won't be available for people to look at later on. I think it is to your advantage if you allow it to be recorded because people from all over the world are not watching this. You know, you, they're just, it's just you basically. And you can use it to help prepare for the exam. So I think it's advisable to leave it on. So anyway, if you don't want it on, the red button, press red button. Okay, so uh, can we have uh, group <coughs> number one, Nicholas and Arve? a bit summary. Uh, we're going to talk about valuable information, short and long term goals, business plan, context, deadline, budget, user of the system, new user, and keep old ones. Task for user, administration of content, then at last look over old system. And first a bit about the valuable information. Besto before we start the project, it's important that we gather information about the mission of the business, the vision and the goals, who are the users and what the content is needed and look into the old system, which are maybe they are using before, see what worked, and see what didn't work. This is an absolute critical part for a fast and successful project. So, uh, for the goal, we must define the first goal of uh, the company, what the, finish, the final goal, the user goal, how many people have to use it, and uh, the financial goal, uh, the cost, the real cost of the, the utilization of the site, cost and maintenance. So, uh, <coughs> uh, so what does the business want to achieve? It uh, want um, the company's goal: financial, image, and uh, about the publicity. After uh, we can build the business plan about the development, the business diversification, and the expansion of the company. Um, 
Yes, it's for uh, we have to make a real audit of the of that the company really need what the user need to use, and uh, it's really important uh, if. Uh, if if uh, the company insists on some point, it's important to to, uh, to keep evidence of the request to prove that uh, you have done really that they want. And we have to define the project planning with the company of uh, that you can do that you you can do. And the budget uh, define uh, for the customer the aspect of budgeting, total cost, uh, planned investment, and uh, all the budgeting about the project. User of system, you have to define uh, approximate the number of user, the different type of user, and. Um, is there uh, any specific information? We will need some specific parts of user have to use. And the marketing uh, for uh, for create, we need all the marketing um, as the marketing plan of the company how they want to develop to uh, question all the all the main user. The important user, everybody who can touch uh, with it, and uh, re uh, respond uh, from user input. Maybe make uh, use survey of the existing website for the new. Use the old one. And then we should talk about uh, should uh, know the few tasks of the user. The user of this information system. Let's say this is a website now. And then what should the user be able to do and manage themselves? And then we can look at on software <coughs> and content management system. You have through volume, now text pattern, and so on. That will make it easier for the user to, to be able to manage the system. Not on admin level, but just on a regular user level. And then you have the administration of the content here. You should outsource perhaps the administration to another company, consulting company. Or you should insource it by training local employees in there. And you should always keep in mind that if you are planning on being very simple for the end user of the system, it will have technical <coughs> achievements that will take time to develop. And here also we can look at content management system, right? Through Paluma and text pattern. And you also need when you are planning in the or you're working planning background here, you have also know the technical infrastructure of the system you are going to set up. They have like server, server hosting, backup, redundancy, fireproof, and security. What I mean here is that on the server level, bit, you have hardware and software. And then you need to find a place where you can host it and have as, mu as little as much of the downtime on the servers. Backup, in case of the worst case scenario. Redundancy, on the same worst case scenario. Fireproofing, and then manual security, like physical lock doors and server rooms and so on. And then, as we spoke about a bit uh, in the start of this, uh, we talked about looking over old system, what did work, what didn't work, who did administration, who did get the administ who did get administrator, and so on. So these are critical bits you have to look into. So the user have much so much of the old system in the new one, so there is less for them to learn. Than just the resources. We use the book and we use Microsoft and Webhouse, WebUser. That's my bill. Thank you. And when you talk <coughs> about the tool, the tool is for our content management system. That's for getting input from the user. Was there any tool available for this whole process, or is there? We can use like a project management tool. Yeah. We 
today we are going to present you some research meetings. Uh, first, I will introduce this me those meetings. Uh, then Lucy will talk about strategy team meetings. I will talk about content management meetings. And finally, Lucy will talk about information technology meetings. Uh, so first, the first thing that I want to say is that in the 19th, we used to do big meetings during one full day about information architecture when uh, when an organization wants to 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 start a project like that. And but today, design and production of website is often more complicated than in the 19th. So we have to make more more meetings, more focused meetings. Uh, moreover, these those meetings involve several teams from different departments, so we have to make some different meetings. So we we'll present you three types of meetings. <coughs> so one of those meetings is strategy team meetings. The point of these meetings is to set uh, high-level goals, defining the mission, vision, intend intended audience, content, and functionality. Because of the need to establish trust and respect, face-to-face -face meetings are very in essential. Um, then only by having those meetings will uh, you learn about the real goals of the project and ask the difficult but necessary questions. And it's important to keep small meetings with five or seven people. With more people, it will be more difficult to let everybody talk. To finish, uh, we you will want to hit one of so some of the following questions. What are the goals for the site? Who are the intended audience? Uh, what is the plain content and functionality? And uh, other questions. Now about the content management meetings. For this kind of meeting, the involved people are the content owners and managers. Um, in this meeting, you will you will have to discuss about the nature of the content and the content management <coughs> process. And uh, with these meetings, you will learn more about the culture and the politics of the organization where the project takes place. Um, some of questions that you will ask in these meetings are: Is there a content management system? How is content entered into the system? What technology is being used? Who is the audience? Uh, what is the format of the content? And who maintains the content? Uh, the last type of meeting is uh, information technology meeting. You should meet with system administrators and software developers to learn about uh, existing and planned technical infrastructure that will support website or intranet. Uh, IT groups don't have much time. It is uh, important to identify this problem early and develop solutions. Otherwise, your whole effort can stall when implementation times uh, arrives. Uh, question includes, uh, will we be able to leverage content management software? How can we create a metadata registry to support distributed training? Those uh, CMS handle automated uh, categorization of documents. What about personalization? How flexible is the search engine?
place with all the, the different questions that we will talk about in this meeting. So okay. Just something to think about session or no, no? Okay. we just have time to run speaking. Thank you. Thank you. How does it work? <coughs> I can log in. Is it there? Oh. Mm. This is Mona, and we are going to talk about stakeholder interviews. So we are going to start with a brief definition about what is stakeholder, and we can say that, as Grimsley said, stakeholder is a person, organization, and social group, or society that has a stake in the business. Uh, stakeholders can be can affect a business, can be affected by a business, and can also affect and be affected at the same time. So they are really important for really important for a business in general. And in this picture, we we have representing the internal and external stakeholders. So the employees, the manager, and the owners are the internal stakeholders of a company. And the suppliers, society, government, creditors, shareholders, and customers are the external stakeholders of a company. Uh, <coughs> and now we are going to talk about stakeholders' interviews specifically. So we start with the definition, and its main goal is to see the work of uh, information architects uh, from <coughs> their stakeholders' view. Uh, and this interview should be an informal dialogue where the, the interviewer, uh, he asks uh, open questions to see the view of the stakeholder of the website and its information environment. Yeah, after having defined um, stakeholder interviews, there comes up the question what the outcomes, the results shall be. And um, yeah, first it is important um, for stakeholders to, knew, to know what information architectures are doing and to receive a better idea of their work. Um, yeah, and then there should be a general understanding of how the stakeholders assess the value the information architectures are, processing, uh, are providing them. And if the assess is not that positive, there have to be developed ideas to improve it. And furthermore, the barriers between the information architectures and st um, stakeholders have to be removed and at the least point a better and deeper relationship to key stakeholders, which are the most important stakeholders, um, should be strived. Yeah, then we have um, also divined, uh, de defined what stakeholder, stakeholder interviews are not. They are no opinion polls. Uh, which means uh, like asking for the opinion of the stakeholders. Like for instance, what do you think about using a task-oriented scheme on the main page? And there are also no opportunity to sell specific activities. Like the question, do you think as well that this would be an important thing to do? And um, as a last point, um, <coughs> stakeholder interviews are no right place to ask closed questions, which can be um, only answered by yes or no. And then 
the last point is the development of a stakeholder interview. Um, yeah, how it should be prepared and performed. So it's, yeah, like has the, in the most efficient way. And um, yeah, first, the stakeholder interview, of course, has to be, um, yeah, or uh, an appointment with the stakeholder has to be organized. It should be, um, yeah, an interview, a in person interview or a phone interview with a duration of about 30 to 60 minutes. Um, yeah, then there have to be, uh, of course, created interview questions. Um, yeah, maybe just to receive an idea about what would be a good question is, do you receive, uh, do you use the existing internet? If not, why? If so, what parts of the internet and how often? And um, yeah, then a preparation time prior to the interview is needed uh, to focus on the purpose and the best possible outcome of the interview. And during the interview, it should be listened very carefully and notes should be taken. And yeah, right after the interview, a short reflection time about the key insights would be also good. And in the end, um, the information architecture should send the stakeholders a thank you note. This is our list of references we have used. <coughs> thank you for your interest. subject subjective mm -hmm. so the interview uh, has to be made you know like very informal mm -hmm. way so we, we don't find we didn't find a, a tool for it okay. a specific tool for it some uh, prepared questions yeah. but not like a tool for My name is Joachim and this is Henrik. We're going to tell you about a bit about uh, heuristic evaluation. And yeah, um, first I'm going to tell you what is heuristic evaluation. It's an uh, usability inspection method for computer software. Um, you can find problems with usability and user interface on websites and computer programs like this. And uh, it's a really informative method. You find a lot of uh, get a lot of good results about the information. Um, you have a lot of evaluators, experts can be mm, yeah, usually experts that know these uh, heuristics. They will get called in and you will uh, give them your web page or something and they try to find, uh, just use it and you get them a list of heuristics. Henrik will tell about it later. You just have to go through and they will evaluate and then they will meet.
meet up together later and discuss these things and you'll find what they like what they don't like and yeah and then you get different results from everybody but together we get a good answer for it it's devel developed by Jacob Nielsen like 20 years ago he had like seven years of teaching experience and usability engineer and um, yeah as a teacher yeah and um, uh, problems are categorized uh, by number usually how how bad it is the different problems yeah I think Henrik will tell you a bit more about the different heretics yeah, so here you have the website usability heuristics, and uh, <coughs> what, well, how this is working is that an experts are using this for looking into a website and use this task to review it. So I'm going to talk about some of them and uh, come some with examples of what you can use on the website. And uh, yeah, first is the home page usability, and it's important that. Uh, most useful content are come on the on the home page first so when users are looking at the home page they will know what this site is about and uh, the items on the home page should also be clearly focused for the users so they can see immediately when they come in on the website and uh, see what is it about so you have the navigation and information architecture on the site and it's important that you have an obvious way to move around also for example you can have like a, a global navigation bar on the top which is always will follow you when you are navigating around and uh, uh, it's also good to have uh, like a navigation feedback from the uh, navigation bar uh, to which can provide you with information where you are on the site all the time and also to f so they can give you the information to go back to the main page when they are finished that's very important uh, so he can also look at the page layout and visual design and uh, the best way to make those sites on the page is that you also there use the most important information first so the when you have uh, less information, you can maybe pick up and, uh, and so forth. And uh, each and every page on the site should also have a uh, uh, consistent layout, so it will engage the users, and so they will not uh, get lost when they are looking at uh, the sites, and yeah, so they won't get confused and so on. And uh, then we have the search visibility. Uh, that's how you s can search on the site so when you're using a search engine for example you can uh, the search engine engine should cover the entire site not just a portion of it and uh, when you're searching you should get useful information which are ranked by relevance for your uh, for your keyword which you written in the search box and uh, the search should also make clear how many results were retrieved when you were searching and also maybe get uh, the opportunities to the users so they can uh, put the number of how many how many, uh, uh, yeah, how many uh, pages and so on in each site and um, then you have the if the search engine can't give you any results they should uh, offer some uh, ideas or options to get your feedback and maybe get you closer to what you're actually searching for and so on. So yeah, the search engine should also uh, cover you with the uh, automatic spell check and should also give you information about the me metadata on the uh, for example documents and the dates of the documents and so forth. Yeah. So this was some of the heuristics the experts looking at when they are eval evaluating the set. Yeah. The next thing, you know, there's a lot of benefits with using this way. It's a really cheap and uh, quick way to do it. Uh, the experts can be done in a couple of days instead of taking the user. You can, you know, user testing. It will take uh, time from the user and it will cost a lot. So instead of that, you can use these experts and it will take like a couple of days and you can do this test usually. So the information you get back is valid and useful because they actually tried your site and or web page and yeah, you get. Yeah, it's specific and yeah, of course in the more early stages of creating the web page or program, you 
it's it's more beneficial than later. Yeah. That was all we had. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. our sources. Yeah. Just a book and internet thing. It's a free mail list that's that the yeah. list. Okay. experts already know about those, so they, they don't have so to. You, ask, you have specific questions you ask. Yeah, they have tasks that they have to go through to find this. Yeah, to possible to find Just this typical yeah. things they can look at. It's not has to be a list every it's time. Yeah. But yeah, it's not a defined list. It can be changed, but this is the most usual things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and then yeah, you maybe you can put up a list as we talked about, but I don't think it's a specific tool. No. Or we didn't find anything though. No. Maybe. Looking at the web page, you know, the yeah. interface and the usability, how easy so it is to use. Mm, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they can. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Probably. We didn't find anything about that, but that's yeah. possible they can. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Go on to use Benny. My name is Aling, this is Kai, <laughs> uh, and our assignment is about technology assessment. Uh, in a dream world, uh, we would design our information architecture independent of technology. <coughs> uh, but in the real world, this would be very difficult to achieve. Developing new uh, software is expensive, time demanding. And uh, this means that people have to use the existing tools and technology when building their information architecture. Therefore, we need to assess the IT environment at the very beginning of a project so that our strategies and designs are grounded in reality. And a way to do this is to perform a gap analysis. A gap analysis is an assessment tool to get an overview of the situation. After this analysis is done, then it's time to find the right tools and softwares to use and try to close the gap. When it comes to tools or software, it's a very important part of a s technology assessment. It's necessary to find and use the correct tools. And here are a few examples of tools or software that can be used. The first one is CMS, Content Management Systems. This is software that manages workflow from content authoring to editing to publishing. With CMS, you don't need to write the code yourself. You can use plugins or modules. And examples are Drupal and WordPress. Search engine is another software to use. Here you can make your own search engine or you can use a plugin. This is software that provides full text indexing and searching capabilities. And examples are Google and Quasir or Yahoo. Yes. Uh, diagramming software is software that is used to model, represent, and visualize information. Uh, within information, techno information architecture, this can be used to draw flowcharts of the hierarchy of the web page. And here are some uh, examples of software. Uh, prototyping tools. When we go from strategy to design, uh, we need to start planning how pages should appear and how they are linked together. Uh, this is done by using blueprints and wireframes. 
that can be made very simple by using pen and paper, or we can use software. Uh, web uh, analysis analytics uh, can be defined as measurement, collection, and anal analysis, and uh, reporting of web data. This can be used to develop the social navigation on a page, uh, like uh, highlighting the most uh, popular content, for example. It is mainly about finding and understanding user behavior so that our web page supports the needs of the users. Uh, this, these kind of tools uh, are uh, mainly used after the web page has been launched as a way of measuring performance and finding ways of uh, improvement. Yes, and here are some examples of software. And then as a conclusion, we can say that technology assessment is to find out where you are and where you want to be and then <coughs> find the right tools and software to get there. Right. And here are our sources. take a gap analysis to see where you are and uh, then you uh, find out what you have to do to get where you want to be mm -hmm. and then you have to find the right tools and to use them right mm -hmm. but I don't have any concrete uh, yeah. on that a lot of time. Every time I love it.
Åh oh, ja, jag menar. Så lovely. Han bara det som kommer rätt åt oss som slipper kriva det här. something to do with the computer. There we go. This one? Yeah, but... First thing, what is content analysis? Uh, content analysis is a research, uh, research method that carefully reviews all documents and objects uh, that, are, that exist on your web page. Uh, we do a content analysis because um, the way the web page is today uh, is not maybe the, uh, the way you want it to be. Um, and we use the content analysis to uh, identify and figure out the gaps between the top down vision and the bottom up reality so the website gets as you want it to be. Uh, when you start your content analysis, you do a high-level content survey uh, where you learn about the scope and the nature of your content. And later on, you do analysis page by page, like a content audit, uh, to make a sort of roadmap. This you do to, um, to make uh, later a content management system, which lets, uh, lets you facilitate and organize your, level, uh, your page level authoring and design. <coughs> First thing you need to do is to, con uh, is to gather your content. Um, the first thing you want to do is to think about um, gathering your sample. Um, this is the information you choose to analyze to do your research. Uh, what, you, and what you mean is the data needed to do the analysis properly and to get the results you need. Uh, this, is, uh, not a uh, this is not possible to do with a computer software because it doesn't think for you. Uh, so you need to use your intuition and judgment. Um, this research, uh, research it's, it's most likely to be a project that is not ongoing activity of a company or, or organization. Uh, so they will most likely uh, assemble a group uh, of experts in this field. Uh, to what extent the analysis will be depends on how much time, money, and how much the company weighs the importance of this project to be. So we have to work from that. Now, what to pick, what type of data? Um, you uh, have to collect different types of data, and the way you do is to look at different dimensions of data on your site. The first is format. Um, the formats you need to find should be both online and offline. Uh, everything that's on your site. You should include text documents, software applications, video, audio files, and emails. You should also include offline resources like books, people, facili uh, facilities, organizations, that, ha that you have from surrogate records. <coughs> Everything that's relevant to your site and to your content analysis. Second is document type. You should include uh, a diverse set of document types, basically everything that's on your site. Uh, examples of these document types are news articles, forms, presentations, spreadsheets, and so forth. 
third is source. Uh, your sample should also include the different types, uh, different sources from the companies or organization. So you make sure that you get data from different sources like marketing, customer support, sales, and so forth. Uh, this is, uh, of course, important along uh, with being political astute. Uh, fourth is uh, subject. Here you need to find the classification of your information and or topics. And you should try to find a broad spectrum of this. Uh, but your website might not have, uh, have this, like good taxonomy and stuff like that. Uh, and this is something you might, might want to improve by doing your content analysis. Uh, if it does not have a taxonomy, you should look for classification schemes or uh, thesaurus uh, for your industry. And the last one, um, you should look at the existing uh, information architecture. You can follow navigation systems on your site to get your content. Um, but you shouldn't look too much into this because this is maybe what you want to improve by doing a content analysis. If you look too much at it, you might get too influenced by it. Other factors you need to look at. Um, you should also take uh, into consideration different dimensions when you're making your content sample, like intended audience for your site, document length, dynamism, language, and so forth. You should also consider the relative number of members of each species. Uh, here you have to use your intuition. If you have 100 or 200 uh, of the same type of document, then maybe uh, if they're the same type of document, then everything is not necessarily need to be included. So you need to check if you learn something from every everyone or just some of them. Um, yes. Uh, finally, you have to consider the law of diminishing returns. While conducting your content analysis, you will feel that you come to a point where you might uh, feel like you're not learning anything anymore. Uh, this m can mean that you are done, or it just means that you might have to take a break, um, because this is uh, um, it, uh, the, the content analysis is useful, but it also can get boring, and you might not see what you need if you have been at it for too long. Well, <coughs> as you said, uh, the, the central purpose of, of content analysis is to provide data that it's critical to the development of a solid information architecture. It helps you reveal patterns and relationships within content and metadata that can be used to better structure, organize, and provide access to that content. For every content that, for every content data that we have, that we want to analyze, we have to di di to distinguish the the following parts. First of all, we have the, the structural metadata of the data. <coughs> this part describes the information hierarchy of the data that we are to analyze. Uh, then we have the descriptive metadata. This part contains the different descriptions about how is the data. And finally, we have the administrative metadata. This part describes the relationship, the relations that exist between uh, the data and, and its context. Um, well, to find this part, uh, it can help to, to ask yourself uh, questions like what's, what is the object that, that you want to analyze, or how, how can I describe this object, or what distinguishes this, ob this object from others. And in fact, uh, content analysis uh, will help you in design phase when you begin flashing at out document type. Uh, uh, you begin flashing out document types as um, metadata schema. But the problem, uh, the main problem about analyzing data is, is <coughs> that if the, if the data, if the data contains a lot of information, it could be really difficult to, to analyze by hand. Uh, so there are some software applications to make this task easier. Uh, first of all, uh, if the data that we want to analyze is small and the information that contains is clearly separated, we have to use uh, this quantitative software uh, these kind of programs count with word frequencies, category frequencies, concordance between words and its context, and cluster analysis. However, uh, if the content of data uh, has large chunks of text, we have to use qualitative software. Uh, the problem about this, these programs is that they are so complex and expensive, and it's probably you need a lot of time to learn how to use them. Both the quantitative, like the qualitative software, gives you some results that you have to interpret. But to solve this point, uh, there are some there are software will do the analysis for you. Just find find a set of text files, uh, start up the software, tell it where to find the coding frame, and 
relax for a few seconds while the content analysis is, is doing for you. And then finally, most of us don't find content analysis uh, especially thrilling or addictive. So however, experience has proven that it is careful this careful work can suggest new insight and produce winning information architecture strategies. It also provides valu valuable input into the broader design of organizations, labeling, navigation, and searching systems. And that's the references.